Um, the last speaker, I have a great deal of honor to introduce. Roy's gratitude and commitment to OHSU and to research led him and his wife, Eulela, to establish a research professorship in urology. To endow a professorship in jurors that research in that particular area will continue to be funded indefinitely, which allows for creativity without constraint. It is therefore a distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Dennis Burdett, who holds the Roy and Eulela Swank Family Research Professorship and is chairman of the Department of Neurology at OHSU. Thank you. I didn't know till today that being chairman of neurology at OHSU was supposed to include having a Maserati. <laughs> I will raise that to the President Robertson. <laughs> it's uh, my uh, distinct honor uh, to participate in the celebration of Dr. Swain's life and career. Mine will be a more formal presentation because I'm going to talk about uh, Roy Swain, the, the scientist. Um, I did not uh, personally know Dr. Swain well, although we uh, I had several meetings over the years, uh, beginning when I was a, a young faculty member and I continued on uh, meeting later at his home with uh, Anne. And, um, but I'm, of course, uh, very familiar with uh, his uh, uh, diet and have seen uh, many patients that uh, he provided um, such superb care to. I come here representing uh, OHSU's Department of Neurology, which he founded. <coughs> And what I uh, have to say is uh, largely taken from a piece I uh, wrote uh, about Dr. Swain that will be published this year in the journal Neurology, uh, which will uh, be read by neurologists uh, worldwide. So Dr. Swain was the first head of neurology at what is now Oregon Health and Science University. And he's best known, uh, as we, uh, we all know, uh, for his advocacy of a low-fat diet for the treatment of multiple sclerosis but I must emphasize you know, that his scientific career encompassed much, much more than that. Between 1934 and 2003, he published over 170 scholarly works. This is a remarkable achievement. His first remarkable that he published research articles for nearly 70 years. Um, most of us uh, had a productive research career that spans 30 or 40 years, 70 years is, is quite remarkable. And if you think about the changes in the world, the changes in medicine between 1934 and 2003, it, it uh, really puts a, a stamp on how remarkable that uh, achievement uh, alone is. His uh, research career is also remarkable for the incredible breadth uh, of topics that it covered and the creativity uh, and that he brought to a, a whole a variety of, of areas. For, uh, for instance, he invented a special uh, myelin stain for the uh, microscopic studies on brain tissues, the Swank stain, uh, which was used for years uh, to study both for research purposes and for pathologic studies um, by uh, pathologists. He did original research on how vitamin B1 or thiamine deficiency uh, damages the brain. He wrote the first descriptions of what was called com uh, chronic combat exhaustion, which is now known as PTSD. He discovered a way to prevent small blood clots from going to the brain and causing strokes during cardiac bypass surgery. He investigated the effects of dietary fat on blood thickness, and of course he did a pioneering work on the use of diet to treat MS. Dr. Swank received his MD and PhD degree in 1935 from Northwestern University. And between 1936 and 1942, Dr. Swank studied some of the most prestigious research centers in the world, including the Peter Grant Brigham Hospital and Harvard Medical School in Boston, the Karolinski Institute in Sweden, and the Montreal Neurological Institute. Now, in 1942, uh, he enlisted in the United States Army and served his country for the duration of World War II. 
think it's worth commenting that there were other uh, colleagues of his who were uh, similarly sitting in prestigious institutions who uh, managed to uh, uh, arrange for positions that kept them in Boston. Uh, he, however, uh, wanted to serve his country. Um, and as part of his service, he was put in charge of a large psychiatric hospital in Paris, where he cared for many soldiers who were suffering what's called combat exhaustion. These experiences uh, later uh, led to the publication of uh, two original papers on chronic combat exhaustion, what we now know uh, to be um, post-traumatic stress disorder. 